This panorama is a TV news magazine program that gives you the story behind the story. It tells the stories the way they should be told by capturing the larger scale. It deals with people's deep feelings on issues that, when brought to the fore, ultimately educates, informs, and entertains. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. The rising cost of living in Nigeria has made bad situation worse, as it has negatively impacted on workers' productivity in Africa's most populous nation. Nigeria, home to the largest youth population globally, has experienced two recessions in the past eight years that have weakened consumers' purchasing power and thrown millions into poverty. The need to allow equitable to people rule their community, high rates of gambling amongst children, and the newly installed traffic lights in some parts of Calabas, our local government area. Welcome and thanks for joining me on the program News Panorama. I am Josephine Efanga. News Panorama. Capture the larger scale. If you have just tuned in, you are watching News Panorama. In response to the rising food prices and widespread scarcity, the Nigerian government has implemented a 150-day of free trade import duty on food items. This temporary relief is designed to increase food supply, ease consumer costs, and enhance economic stability. If you want to better, provides an in-depth analysis on the policy's rationale consequences, the report. The 150-day free import duty on food items is a move made by the government in response to the price of the citizen with regard to the level of food insecurity and vulnerability. Nigeria's food security challenges are complex, posing significant threats to food availability, access and affordability. The country's rapidly growing population projected to reach 400 million by 2050 reduces consumer purchasing power, worsening hunger and malnutrition. Food scarcity is another critical problem with repeated shortages of staple food items like rice, maize and wheat, particularly in rural areas. Trade policies intended to protect local farmers have unknowingly limited food imports, contributing to shortages and high prices. Furthermore, Nigeria's economy is unstable, characterized by currency fluctuations, economic downturn, and, and high unemployment, making food even harder to afford. With an objective to increase food availability, reduce prices and help consumers by temporarily removing import duties on selected food items such as maize, hogs, brown rice, wheat, and cow Piece, the government aims to encourage increased food imports, thereby augmenting domestic supply and reducing prices. This policy is expected to provide relief to consumers, particularly vulnerable populations, while also supporting economic stability. While the policy aims to address food insecurity, there are potential drawbacks to this policy. In an interview with some respondents, they welcome the move of the federal government to help alleviate the problem of food scarcity, noting that rather than 150 days, the borders should be opened for a longer period of time to allow more food flow into the state. I think uh, the food and hungry What we need is the border should be open. By opening the border, that would eliminate the suffering of so many Nigerians, including you and me. So, not only the border, I even suggested that the, the price of fuel also should be reduced because we have suffered so much because of the increase in uh, fuel price and the locking of the uh, 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 borders. Others were of the view that returning the removed subsidy would be a much more welcome solution as the prices of goods, especially food, would drop significantly when this is done. It is not just opening the borders that should be considered. You should consider many avenues of alleviating the, the hardship. One of which should be to reduce the price of fuel. It's not everybody a farmer. So if fuel price comes down, 
then uh, prices of the also will also come down. So the square matter, not the production of uh, of farm farm clothes for farmers is square. And yet, some opined that empowering the farmers with modern farming tools, grants, loans, and other necessary equipment to enable them farm in larger scale would be a much better initiative. And if they can provide materials and other things and fertilizer, everything, and give to the farmers, the farmers can make it here. They can produce. They can produce they're not on this, needed. So, like Ben, we are not. Let them try to bring farmers up. Opening border for goods to come inside, uh, though it's good to an extent, but the one inside, that is in terms of our internal production and all that, to create uh, avenue, like as a mention of fertilizer and all that, it will be a very good help, you know, to encourage our farmers to put to help for the increase of yield of production. While the move by the government is applaudable, many are of the view that it is but a temporary solution, asking that the government goes back to the drawing board to create long-lasting plans that will be beneficial to all. For Service News Panorama, if you want it, we are reporting. The rising cost of transportation has become present concern for many, as prices continue to soar amidst the backdrop of economic uncertainty, Blessing Basi explores the causes and consequences of the growing demands for change. The report. The cost of transportation has skyrocketed in recent times, leaving many to lament over the increasing financial burden. This surge in transportation costs has become a major concern for citizens, particularly in the aftermath of the global protest that was associated to bad governance. Many individuals have expressed frustration over the rising costs, which have made it difficult for them to commute to work, school, and other essential destinations. transport we are paid to work 15 naira but now presently we are paying 1000 1000 to be placed even when you go to market to buy something 3000 cannot reach you for a portable pot of soup that means it's affecting us mentally that you even have issues with your brain just to go to market you end up not eating a day some said the situation has become so dire that they are struggling to make ends meet with the cost of transportation consuming a significant portion of their income. The present economy we find ourselves is somehow challenging. It has put a lot of families into a very difficult situation, whereby many find it very difficult to have a square meal per day. So it is very difficult, and the government are they are sick. They are very ignorant about it. So we don't know our fate right now. We don't know where we are heading to. We survive on only oil. Oil. So therefore, all our emphasis, both feeding and schools, everything has gone up. Meanwhile, the cost of the living has gone beyond the oil. The high cost of transportation has been attributed to various factors, including the increase in fuel prices, poor road conditions, and inadequate public transportation systems. These challenges have combined to create perfect storm that has left many feeling helpless and desperate for a solution. It's affecting me badly. The government should invite. They agree. They agree youths. They agree Nigerians. They agree market women to a roundtable discussion. So that they can point out the area 
where the government can come in and intervene. As the country, the country grapples with the effect of factors affecting governance, the high cost of transportation has become a symbol of the struggles faced by ordinary citizens. Many are calling for urgent action to address the issue, including investment in public transportation and measures to reduce fuel prices. Today I could have come with my car. I couldn't buy fuel because it's becoming higher and higher every day. The last time I bought fuel was 900. Today I went to buy. I was told it's 1,000 naira. So it's getting higher and higher. When we know that God can do all things, that with time it will subside, things will normalize. That is our prayers for cross river. The high cost of transportation, uh, after the protest, the uh, fuel situation has gone worse than it was before. Before it was even better. But after this uh, protest, today we sell 1,000 naira, tomorrow 900. Next tomorrow, you know, it flocks to that way. So it's causing more hardship than it was before. I pray that the government will look into it, you know, seriously, to make sure our children who go to school when they are school will not be affected. Because of high cost of transportation, a lot of persons now park their cars at home. As the people demand changes, it remains to be seen whether those in power will heed the call and take concrete steps to addressing the crisis. For CRBC News Panorama, Blessing Basi reporting. The situation has reached a boiling point with many warning that if left unchecked, the high cost of transportation could have far-reaching consequences for the economy and society as a whole. In recent weeks, Crush River State has been faced with sharp increase in the price of kerosene, a fight of fuel for many households. The surplus has seen prices move from 1,000 to 1,800 and even 2,000 naira per litre, has had a profound impact on residents, straining household budgets and altering daily expenditures. Praise Chijoke tells us more the report. Firstly, the recent surge of kerosene prices has dealt a severe blow on the local population, who mostly depend on this fuel for cooking and lighting in their homes. The price hike, which an unprecedented level, has sparked whispers of concerns and economic strain among residents across the state. The recent increase in the price of kerosene has placed a significant financial burden on the residents of Cross River State, affecting their daily life and escalating living costs. The price of kerosene, a crucial fuel for cooking and lighting in many households, has surged by over 30% in the past month which reports indicating that the cost per litre has risen from 1,710 naira to 2,400 a litre. For many families in Cross River State, this hike has led to a drastic change in their routine, especially in rural areas where kerosene is often a primary source of energy. Despite the fact that most homes use gas cooker to cook, many more in the middle and lower class use kerosene as an important commodity in their homes. Some citizens of Cross River State who are directly affected by the sudden hike in the price of kerosene shared their grievances, stating that most of them had to switch from using stoves to gas cooker as the price of gas seems cheaper than the price of kerosene. Yeah, it has been um, normal because um, before now, I can remember when I was young, we used to buy sorry, kerosene for maybe um, less than 200 naira, but now we are talking of 1,000 or something. So it has really affected them. Now they could not buy now, those who used to buy and flow, but now it's very high. People cannot buy. I use uh, gas, I use kerosene. You cannot avoid it now. So you may try all possible ways to use it. Maybe you want to go, you have in mind to go and buy one liter. But now you wait, when you go, the price is changing. Now you decided to buy even half liter, which is cannot carry you. Okay. Some respondents gave their view on possible causes of the sudden hike. It's because of the refineries are not working. And with the little ones we have, the oil bunkering has also caused, uh, it's one of the major causes. I think it's for them to, give, uh, to allow other refineries like the, the bunkers to give access to other people to produce. I think when, they, when there is more Others pleaded with the government to come to their aid as the hike in the price brought a wave of devastation by looking into the situation. We that we don't use, we that are not using the reason. You know, we are as well feeling the hardship of the economy. The economy is very bad. You know, everybody, everybody is aware. To me, I would advise the federal government to return that subsidy. 
there should return back subsidy and see to it that cuisine should not be even costlier than or higher than food. With that, I believe cuisine will be affordable. As the situation continues to develop, the impact of raising price high continues to be felt across the state, states, underscoring the need for effective policy intervention to support vulnerable homes during this period. The service in this panorama is to the report. For too long, they have able to people, though few in number, have been overshadowed in the political landscape of Prussia University, despite being one of the most culturally rich and historically significant ethnic groups in the region. Their influence in key political positions have been diminished, often in favor of non indigenous especially those from the Ibibu, Oron, and Anak ethnicities of Akwaibom state. Under the pretext that they grew up in Cross River State or have maternal ties to the Fkabrutu people. However, as Cross River State confronts the challenges of modern governance and strives to achieve its full potential, it is crucial that the Fkabrutu indigenous are given the opportunity to lead and represent the community in political offices. This is not to ponder to discrimination, but a call for an equitable representation in the political affairs of the state. It's notwithstanding the fact that the effort is hospitable, Maurice Etam argues that the time has come for the Fkebru to people to assert their rightful place in political affairs, in the political affairs of Cross River State. The report. The use of ethnic people in political prominence is not just a matter of social justice, but also a strategy in state development. The increased participation of sons and daughters of the state politics is crucial to unlock its full potentials and secure a brighter future. Crossover State stands at the threshold of a new era, ready to unlock its vast potential and take its rightful place among Nigerian leading states. However, this vision cannot be realized without the full participation and representation of the indigenous people, particularly the ethics. Although they are marginalized, underrepresented in the political arena, the ethic possess a unique cultural heritage and perspective that can enrich the state governance and development. Dr. Patrick Eneoku, former chairman of Aquabula Government Council, pointed out while the federal government's constitution allows people who have stayed in a location for a length of time have contributed to the well-being and the growth of the place is liable to contest for any position. It is wrong that they overshadow the indigents of the place and overtake the position. If the cross Iberian does not have somebody that sponsors him or her, and the non cross Iberian has, then there will be a problem of getting the person voted for because the person will not be able to take care of uh, those areas that he has to go to. Let's say the cross Iberian is contesting from a party that does not have people within its membership that will work for him and the cross and the uh, non cross Iberian has. So the tendency is that the people in the other party will work for their own candidates who may not be cross Iberian and then it will cause the person that is a cross Iberian to lose. Those are the things that we really need to look at. For cross Iberian to win elections, they must belong to a strong political party that has strong people behind the party to support him. Mr. Super Duke, president of the Fugabrutu Student Association, spoke about the misconception they think have within themselves when vying for a position, stressing that the lack of confidence in themselves pushes them to allow the unknown indigents to operate on their behalf. It is now a call for our people to rise up to the occasion that before you become a leader, you must first be a follower. In as much as you are a follower, you must do something that your people will see and say, okay, we can actually vouch for this person. And then give this person the opportunity to lead us. Dr. Stephen Nyong, lecturer of Mass Communication Department, University of Calabar, and some others, opine that the indigenous lack of participation in politics is due to the lack of political awareness and they believe that politics is insincere and full of dishonesty. The father advised that the folk able to sons and daughters should arise and take their rightful place. And um, I do know that the typical ethnic man, a woman, believes in sincerity. Perhaps he or she is looking at it from the point of the fact that politics is all about the sincerity. He believes that what you promise is what you should do, you should believe, you should live by your words. And perhaps that accounts for the reason why you think some of them are not involved in politics. So why some people are not making it is because of ignorance. They don't know the benefits attached to it. Yeah, in the Calabar, 
this is the in metropolis where everything comes. And since Calaba is uh, the three senatorial district, we have some some constituency that are more active than other constituency. Some of them they are always involved in relaxing, they don't always like to force themselves to work. They are always at home relaxing, seeing their leisure time to enjoy themselves. I call on ethics, sons and daughters, to stand up to the occasion and apply full participation in politics at large. For CRBC News Panorama, more is reporting. Child gambling has become a growing concern in Nigeria, with an increasing number of minors engaging in gambling activities. In Nigeria, the rate of child gambling has risen significantly. An estimated 40% of children aged 10 to 19 participating in some form of gambling activity trace to the easy access to online betting platforms and shops with inadequate laws and enforcement to prevent underage gambling. Peter Ogbuaka explores the high rate of child gambling and its effect. The report. Children spend almost two billion on sports betting daily, which translates to about 730 billion per year, with an estimated 40% of people involved being children aged 10 to 19. Gambling, an activity as old as human society itself, has been a part of Nigerian culture for generations. People have long placed wagers on the outcome of future events, seeking excitement, socialization, and the possibility for financial gain. Over the years, gambling has evolved into various forms, now commonly referred to as betting and lottery by a wide range of the population. However, Nigeria's gambling industry has rapidly expanded since the partial legalization in the 1990s with its associated risks and challenges. More alarmingly, about 57.2% of school aged children reported gambling at least once in their lifetime, despite legal age restrictions. The effect of gambling and sports betting on underage individuals can be severe and long lasting, as this act is well known to be addictive and the exposure of young ones to sports betting can lead to a lifelong struggle with addiction, which could lead to anxiety and depression. Betting companies do not put restrictions on the practices done by minors, making them believe that money can be easily won or lost, leading to an unhealthy attitude towards finance. Some cross linked underage gambling to laziness and the pursuit of wealth through easy means. They often lost, often lost. Sometimes when they say, okay, I win uh, 12,000, for example, if you ask them what they have played so far, they have played about 90,000. Play about 40,000. So all that, that win, you will now be able to say, oh, we have won something. Frankly, it's actually, I personally discourage it. I have not played it. I just see what they are doing there. And those, those little ones that are below that age, I want to even say all age women should disease from the gambling. What is really making them to go into the gambling is maybe because of the money. They feel like maybe if they carry the small money that they have and put into it, they will be able to get more money. Then it's not actually a good thing for children, I mean, yes, for people under the age of 18 years to be gambling. Others called on government to abolish gambling, saying sports betting is also affecting the minds of adults as well, not just minors. It should be abolished mm -hmm. because the rate of the, how will I even call it, the rate of the psychological trauma. In a society, it's very, very bad. And if you look at those bits, they are not adhered to, eh? like uh, uh, the instruction that was given unto them. You see, less child children of 15, 10 going into bed, and they are betting, uh, and they are there doing what they should have not done at the age. In my own side of it, I think government should abolish it. These ones express concern about the rate of underage involved in gambling, advising young people to desist from looking for fast money, but rather work hard for the betterment of their future and focus more on priorities. Once you are exposed to money, see, if your first game be played, <laughs> like be 50, 60, your first game be played, if you put on a get like, mass it 10k, it go sweet you. But since you don't see that money now, if everybody want money now, you go come and carry money they put, your mama money go enter. Papa money go enter, you go see food, your school fees, you just do like this. They go tell you, you get one guy, you get short odds. You go do like this, you go pay for short I run this year, I just go, I experience. 
I got him as coffees. Go buy short game, short game cuts. The man tell me add 5k for another game. I add bed again. So if you are on a 16, you are on a 18, and you want to play, so leave it. Gambling is not just done online or in shops. It can also be done at home or in schools. Analysis shows that 20% of the people that gamble in Nigeria learn to do so. Peer pressure plays a vital role in corrupting the minds of young people. As a normal class game could turn into a competition, with whoever wins gets a bigger prize. It is advisable that young minds are educated and sensitized on the dangers of gambling for a better cross river state. For CRBC News Panorama, Peter Boaka reports. The Cross River State's governor, Senator Basi Dedetu, has installed new traffic lights in some areas of Calabar South local government area to improve traffic flow and safety. The lights, equipped with advanced technology, have already reduced congestion of the area. Committed to maintaining these lights and plans to install more in other areas of the city is a move welcomed by residents and commuters. Stephanie Oreng brings details the report. Calabar, Cross River State, in a bit of traffic congestion and road safety, Cross River State Governor, Senator Basi Otsu, has installed the new traffic lights at strategic locations like the main gate, main avenue, and some south parts across the Calabar City. Traffic and street lights are an indispensable tool in the society. While the traffic lights regulate vehicles and pedestrian traffic, the street light illuminates pathways, making the society safe and more secured. Due to numerous road rage and insecurity in the southern part of Calabar Metropolis, the initiative by the government to install traffic and street lights in the areas such as University of Calabar Main Gate by Etago, Main Avenue, Yellow Duke and some other streets is indeed a welcome development. The installation of the traffic lights have helped reduce traffic congestion, risk of accidents as well as pedestrian safety. While the street lights have created a sense of security among the residents of the area, who can now move safely. The new traffic lights is a good development. In, though some people will have their ups and downs, people are looking for food and all that. But it's a good development for the government to be able to help us control the traffic lights to reduce the length rate at which people are having accidents and all that. And there are some commuters also that were not used to how it works. They have been able to be educated. Yeah. Some of them now now know that I can there is a certain place that I can look for. It's been helping, it is up the old up, especially when it comes to talk about from total, what market, Marian and all those areas. It's really been helping and I want want to watch prosperity and especially ones at the Calabar Metropolis to always adhere to the traffic light so that it will also and it has eased a lot of accidents, no more accidents in the Calabar metropolis through the help of the traffic lights. It's very, very important because it aids in the road movement. It allows pedestrians to actually move freely without any kind of obstruction. Some respondents expressed gratitude to Governor Basi Otu for keeping to his promise of service to the people. I'm very, very happy with this traffic. It stopped many accidents, many, many things. In fact, we pray for this woman to continue and continue and go bless them. Other respondents explained that the effort of the state government to install traffic and street lights have improved the security situation of some areas. When I walk around in Calabar, it's always a difficult when even the, the vehicle is driving with their own headlights and it's always dark everywhere but currently i noticed that even the very good driving during night they don't even own their headlights again everywhere we, we street lights not only in the major streets even the local street as long as road traffic and traffic lights and uh, the security is perfectly the traffic and the street lights located at the major intersections have shown a significant impact, reducing congestion and potential risks of accidents, as well as the poster and sense of security among the residents of the areas with a promise from the government to maintain these infrastructures. The residents of Southern Calabar can be at peace at all times. From CRT News Panorama, Stephanie Oren reports. That is all we have on our lineup this week. We hope to be back same time next week. Do keep a date with us. I am Josephine Efanga.